Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 7, Video 2 on Resistance and Powering Prediction using Hull Speed. We've loaded our design in from MaxSurf and we've selected our surfaces to measure. The next thing we need to do is select the resistance method and then set up the design waterline. We can do that using the frame of reference command. After we've done that, the hull will be measured and the measured data will be displayed in the data window. At that point, we can manually override that measured data if we want to. Some of the other adjustments you might make relating to input of your hull data is you may wish to change the trim angle. You can do that by using the pitch uh, angle in the rotate command in MaxSurf to rotate your model through a number of trim angles. If you want to actually change your model in MaxSurf, then you can make a modification after you've done some analysis and then come back and reselect the measure hull command to remeasure it without losing your other data. You also probably want to use the coefficients command from the display menu to check co uh, dimensions relating to coefficients, so to specify what length draft and beam are used for calculating the various coefficients. And finally, just a reminder that you can save your measurement data to a separate HSD or hull speed data file. So let's move over to hull speed. We can see we've got our vessel here with some basic measured data. Before I go any further, I will choose my methods. So this is a rib, so I'm going to pick out a couple of uh, planing methods and turn those on. And you can see as I do that, a couple of columns are added to my data window with the measured data from the hull displayed in those columns. I would use the uh, coefficients command to check uh, what values I'm using for my coefficients. You can see that there are plenty of choices around how we calculate the coefficients. If the method itself requires a particular combination of values, then hull speed will use those automatically for you. And as far as setting up the design waterline goes, we use the frame of reference command and just adjust the DWL parameter to set the height of the design waterline. So if I just make this window a bit larger, you can see which values are required for this method and the measured values. If I wanted to change these, I could uh, edit them at this point. If I wanted to change that dead right as angle or the location certainly of the LCG, I could move around by typing in a revised value manually. Before we start running our analysis, we should check the applicability of the methods that we've turned on. And we strongly recommend you take a look at Appendix B of the user manual to do that. If you go into the Hull Speed user manual and go down to Appendix B, you'll see that uh, there's a whole lot of information in here about the type of hull shape, the speed range, and the key dimensions of the hull that are applicable for the different methods. So you can see here detailed information on applicable fruit numbers and so on. So you can make sure that the method is uh, applicable for the vessel that you're working with. If you do enter data that's outside the range of applicability, you'll see the numbers change automatically in Hydromax, so shown in red if they're too low or shown in orange if they're too high. And to show you exactly what data is required, any fields which are not necessary will just have a dash marked in them. So you're welcome to check and override that data, but just keep an eye out for those hints. So if we go back to hull speed, we can see our measured data here. If I was in to enter in uh, an overridden length that was too low, then when I went in there you'd see the colour coding would come into effect to show, or if I used a value that was too high, um, then that also would be shown as being too high in the uh, field here. So there's some checks there to help keep you within the range of applicability of the method. And finally you should check the measurements on the hull as well. For certain types of measurements, it's not always easy for hull speed to do that precisely. Things like estimating if it's a hard china or a round bilge vessel, which is necessary for some methods. Calculating the dead rise angle uh, can be occasionally subject to error, so you should check the value that's been measured. Same with the half angle of entrance at the design waterline, and also for the methods that measure the bulb on a bulbous bow, uh, you should check those values. There are a couple that can be displayed to check for you. So if we go to our 3D view and then go say to a plan view, if we're looking at our half angle of entry, if you go to the display menu and make sure the measurements option is turned on, you can see the white triangle is drawn here to show you the measured 
half angle of entry on the waterline. And you can see an averaging method is used for the immersed sections. The same applies to the dead rise angle. If we go into our body plan view, you can see the white triangles shown in the body plan uh, give you some feedback as to the measured angle that's been calculated for you. You can see down there it's 22.38 degrees. You can override that value if you want to. So that completes our setup of our measured data and uh, the other values which have been measured off the MaxSurf design. Thank you for watching.